Morning. Morning. Um, I'd first like to say our thoughts and prayers are out with the University of Utah and Aaron Lowe's family about the tragedy that happened over the weekend and um, puts things in perspective for everybody. But it's just, I know they they lost a player last offseason. Um, it was actually uh, really close with Aaron. Aaron was actually representing him, so uh, it's a tough thing for them. So our thoughts and prayers are with those guys. Do you have a conversation with your team about that earlier today? We haven't had a chance to know. We're, we're going to do that later on tonight. Did you talk to, to Coach Whittingham about it at all? Or any just text him. Okay. Uh, Dorian, what's the latest on him? He'll be out there today. Did he have any tests to, submit to make sure he's structurally okay? He gets examined by our medical staff all the time. Okay, and so he's cleared to practice full go he's today? He's cleared for today to go out on the field. We'll see what he can do. How about Sam Marazzo? How is he looking? Sam is unavailable. He's unavailable. Yep. What, what is the decision making? Uh, what do you do to decide who fills in for someone like that? Because we've seen John Gaines and, and Duke Clements came in. We'll rotate everybody in there and see who's available at the end of the week. Quinn Lake was out uh, pregame warming up in uniform, mm -hmm. but didn't, didn't see the field. Is he clear? Is he practicing today? We'll see what he can do today. But yep. he'll, he'll be out there. He'll be out there today. Yep. There was a moment on, on the for the game on TV where Garbers is facing your way and you're kind of telling him to relax a little bit. Was he nervous at all, or don't you don't remember that? that? Okay, yeah, you were like seeing kind of like telling him to relax. I don't okay. think you can look at a quick soundbite and see what a conversation is. Going okay, on. no, I mean I wasn't looking for a convers like what the conversation was, but for him maybe going in a you spot just asked real me quick. If I was holding him to relax. So that was about the okay. conversation. Was okay, all right, okay. So, and I don't recall what it was. So it could okay, been, okay, that's fine. He could have been making a check about what the secondary mm -hmm. was doing and so. That's fair. One okay. thing about Garbs that I love, and like all of our backup quarterbacks, they're into every play. So we use them a lot on the sideline. So it'll mm -hmm. be a lot of those things with my quick reference of, hey, what was the coverage there? And they'll be able to give you, you know, right now it was cover one, coach, it was cover mm -hmm. two, corner carry. You know, those guys, him and Chase have been fantastic in terms of being able to give us information from the sideline. We rely on those guys a lot. So it could have just been a conversation about what the coverage was. So. Um, there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty at the end of the game. Yeah, that was on me. What was that for? What, what happened? They didn't like what I said to him. What did you say to him? <laughs> that I didn't like the call. What was the call? It was a non-call. <laughs> on, a, on a hold or something? That's all I can say about the officials. It was a non-call that I disagreed with. So. Did you? Did you? I got a penalty. Did you express yourself colorfully or how? No. Nope. Okay. Is that the first one you've ever gotten in your career? Yep. How do you feel about that? <laughs> so it was the appropriate time because we were taking a knee, so it didn't affect the outcome of what was going to happen. So I would not have done it if it would affect the outcome of what was going to happen. So we just got moved back 15 yards, and we'll take a knee from 15 yards back. So when you went, you know, when we can do it and when we can't do it. When, when you went back and watched the film again and saw how Dorian gutted out, especially the last few plays, mm -hmm. what, what, how, how impressive was that? I think it's always been impressive, and he's been that type of player since the jump. And I remember the first start of his career at Oklahoma and how tough he was taking on the Oklahoma team. So um, not of any surprise to me. Um, one of Dorian's best qualities is his toughness, and I think that shone through on Saturday. Now that you've watched the game film, uh, did anything catch you by surprise at all, or was did it lay out pretty much the way you, you saw the game live Saturday? No, I mean, I, I think it was two tough football teams that were really competing. We knew even when we jumped out to an early lead um, that, you know, the one thing I know about Stanford, it's a resilient bunch. It's a tough bunch, um, which is a well a coach team as we'll ever face. Um, they're in every game they play. They give themselves an opportunity. Uh, I think that team has tremendous poise. So we knew, and we talked about it all week long to our players, we're going to get their best shot, and, and we got to be able to trade punches. So um, when they get tied up at 21, I don't think anybody's surprised. Um, but I thought our guys showed great resiliency and kind of being able to handle that and weather that. Um, and then for our defense to play that that team and hold them to 55 snaps, they had three spikes, so 55 snaps and 11 first downs was a real credit to how good our guys played. Um, we need to eliminate the X plays. I think that was the factor in what helped them um, offensively. Um, but you know, I, I thought it was a really good effort by our defense. Aside from the two quick uh, uh Passing touchdowns by Stanford. The uh, mm -hmm. pass defense looked, you know, pretty solid. You know, they maybe did a nice up. job. There's some corrections we need to make there, but I think um, we, we generated and forced the pocket better than we did the week before. Um, I thought we were closer in our coverage than we were in the week before. Um, so again, everything we talk about, there's three phases. There's preparation, which occurs during the week. There's competition, um, which we have on Saturdays, and then there's the learning phase. So um, we're going through that today. It's making proper corrections from what transpired um, on Saturday, and then we move on to Arizona State.
Oh, Lucky Jones uh, look, looked pretty disruptive over the weekend. And I, I saw Did. when you were leaving through the tunnel, you were with him. Seemed yeah. pretty excited. What would you say to him? I just thought Carl had a, Carl played a great game. You know, I think he's starting to come into his own. He got recruited here as a safety. He's played inside linebacker. I think he's finally settled into a um, into a brewing spot on defense. Um, he's really starting to um, feel comfortable out there. You can see him playing with confidence. He's a tough, physical kid. Uh, he's got a great motor. I was just really happy for all the work that Carl's put in. He's one of our hardest working guys. Uh, to see it show up on the field like it did on Saturday was uh, you know, what Carl is all about. And I was just excited for the kid. When you look at the uh, schedule, a W is a W. So uh, how happy are you with the team's progression throughout the season? Yeah, I mean, that's what this is all about. You get a test every week. And it's not about the cumulative part of it. It's about staying in the, in the moment and staying in the process. I think if um, you look at the sports psychology studies, if you look too forward into the future, um, you're too anxious, you know, and you can reduce 80% of your anxiety if you just live in the process, and that's what we try to do. So um, we had a really good week last week, Monday through Friday, uh, and then it paid off for us on Saturday, and then we'll just start the same process over again this week. Where, you know, so we're trying to climb a mountain each week. Um, so we're right at the bottom of the mountain again right now. So we'll start right now getting ready for our preparation for Arizona State. I don't know if you saw the video of Sam Arazzo telling us about John Gaines and his dad and his situation. Uh, he basically was saying that he, you know, he lost both his kidneys. He battled beat kidney cancer. Now, you know, I guess he'll eventually need a transplant. But mm -hmm. for him to help out a teammate and publicize that and make everybody uh, aware of what's going on, what does that say about Sam? And, and, and yeah, the, Sam's awesome. You know, he's been a great leader from the from the beginning since he got here. Uh, has worked his way through everything. Um, everybody on this football team has a tremendous amount of respect for Sam and how he carries himself on a daily basis. And it doesn't surprise me. We're all aware of the story. Uh, but the fact that Sam would spend time to talk about John, it just tells you how much he loves John and how much he cares about John and his family. And, you know, that's that that's Sam. That's what makes Sam such a special young man. And it sounds like the programs, I talked to John's dad last night, the program helped fly John out to after his surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and supported and supported the family. Can yeah, you talk about I mean, that? that's what the process is for us. Is that we are a family, and when someone is in our family, our extended family, like John's dad, that that's going through something, that it's important for John to be there. So, if NCAA rules. Um, there's a fund that you can help student athletes with that. Um, and we applied for that and got a chance to get John home to be with his family and to spend time with him. And um, they were out for I think it may have been the LSU game, but a chance to see them after the game. Um, but you know, that's kind of what it's all about here. Yeah, Arizona State game this weekend. Uh, the last two times you played him, you kind of kept Jaden Daniels and Jackson, really dynamic quarterback. Mm -hmm. how, how do you kind of go about doing that again? Do you have to start? From we got to start from scratch. You know, it's uh, this will be our second time playing against this scheme. He was more of a spread offense guy in the first year that we played him, and then last year they brought in Zach Hill from Boise State, so they've changed to a, a little bit more of a multiple tight end set. Um, you know, we played them down there during COVID. Um, you know, obviously it was a, a different time. For everybody, you know, all the, all the last year was so the, how that game played out. And um, we'll look at the film from last year's game, and but we always we still have four games to go off of this year, so uh, I'm confident our coaching staff will put a pretty good plan together on how to defend him. But that's obviously the key. Jaden is the key uh, to that offense, and we need to contain him because um, he's explosive in the run game. Um, and really, a lot of it's not designed run; it's just when things are covered, he can take off and go, and he can eat up some chunks of yards because he's a really productive runner and he's obviously a very accurate passer. So. Um, trying to keep Jaden in tech will be a real big tall task for us this week. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank All you. Right, thanks, thanks, Coach. Coach.